<clears throat> Good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, February 13, 2018, Southwood School Committee meeting being held in Chambers. Uh, at this time, I'd entertain a roll call, please, Max. Mr. Bishop. Present. Ms. Duval. Present. Mr. Lazo. Present. Dr. Page. Excused. Ms. Peloquin. Uh, present, and I am recording this meeting. Mix Ryan. Excused. Mr. Thomo. Present. Five present to excuse. Thank you. Would you all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, please? Thank you. At this time, we'll have public input. If there's anybody from the audience who would like to come up and address the school committee, please feel free to come to the podium, and if you would kindly state your name and uh, address. Kathy Lapriori, 51 Mark Avenue. Um, I'd like to start off with saying that Mr. Bishop, there you how, are. how are you? I agreed with what you had written in the paper, or what you said that was printed in the Telegram and Gazette on Monday, the comments that you made. Um, I wish that you could come back and be our high school principal now. Wish we could go back in time. Yeah, thank you for your vote of confidence. <laughs> um, I've been hearing that things are headed in the right direction with our schools. The teachers and the principals have been feeling a little better about things, I think. But recently I've heard about changes in the curriculum, which is upsetting to them. Why do we have to change things when they seem to be a bit more positive? I just don't understand the changes. Um, and one teacher has said that it's starting to be run like a business. Education should not be run like a business. We have lost good students to school choice, and of course they take a lot of money with them to these other schools. Do we get students coming to our town, bringing this money back to us? I don't think so lately. Hopefully that'll change. Sometimes I feel it's a fad to send your child somewhere else. You know, it's just something to do. Just because people in charge at the top are not always making the best choices doesn't mean that our teachers aren't doing their jobs. We've got many wonderful teachers. You can't, you can't always run away from things. Sometimes you have to dig your heels in and see what you can do to help these changes come about for your kids. Not just the ones who need help, but also the ones who are doing well and would like to have recognition too. I'm not a parent, but a grandmother who cares so much that I stick with it. We really need to look at the big picture, including all the students. I have a grandson at West Street School. My daughter and husband went to speak with Mrs. Seifert, <laughs> the principal, about a concern, and she couldn't have been nicer. She listened and she helped with the problem. It wasn't a big problem, but just something we needed to talk about. We keep hearing it will take time, I don't, but I don't think it should take years to be able to hold our heads up again in our school system. Um, on a lighter note, the Southridge Historical Society offers a $1,000 scholarship each year. The applications are dropped off at the high school. It seems like the last year or two, no one has applied for these scholarships, which seems kind of odd. So I just wanted to let you know that it's out there. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. LaFiori. <coughs> Anyone else from the uh, gallery who would like to come up and speak to the school committee this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number four. Dis discussion of minutes, um, January 9th. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Ms. Feliquin. I would like to make a motion to add an agenda item if possible. You'd like to make a motion to add an agenda item? Well, just looking at the agenda, we don't have... Um, our agendas typically include members forum. I'm assuming this just must have been an oversight, so I'd just like to add it to the agenda if possible. 
Mr. Lazo? Uh, point of discussion. I, I was going to propose after this agenda item to reinstall the Chairman's Forum and the Member's Forum uh, just to coincide with parliamentary procedure because technically the Chairman is not supposed to be. Uh, you're supposed to be the moderator and your platform would be the Chairman's announcements. Just like the members wouldn't speak under superintendent or chairman's announcements, we would speak under members' forum. So I was planning on a motion to waive the rules, to add agenda item, uh, which would be agenda item, call it 4B, and 5, 4B or 4A, whatever they want to call it. Are you making that motion, Mr. Lazo? I will make a motion to waive the rules, to add two agenda items tonight. Uh, 4A, which was chairman's forum, and 5A members forum. Could, could we move, uh, could we, uh, prior to that, could we make that 4B? We already have a 4A, Scott. I'm sorry, 4B. I had it Thank right. you. 4B, okay. and that was to? Chairman's forum. Chairman's forum. And 5. Well, we have a well, 5. Wait, wait, well, let me put it to you this way. We'll call it 5C. Okay. But what it should be is its own. When we do the agendas at the, the office, the secretary automatically would add agenda item four, five, six. It wouldn't be an A or a B when you do the next agenda. Okay. I would like to see it back to normal. Do we have a second on that proposal? Second. Second. All in favor? That's unanimous, I believe. Uh, all right, so uh, I guess uh, we're gonna go back to four. Uh, you have to vote the main motion. Oh. That was a motion to waive the rules to add it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I have one more item I wanted to bring up. We also, um, we didn't have the next meeting date listed on the agenda, so I want to make sure that we set the date of the next meeting okay. before. Do you have a date in mind? Um, well, I don't know. That Actually, I think that would be subject to discussion that would come up further down right. the meeting. So, so shall we put a... Uh, can we just put how about a five? How about a 5D we could add uh, discussion of next meeting date? Because I think we should have a discussion and then decide when okay. the next That's meeting fine. should be. So. Is that appropriate, Mr. Lazo, my parliamentarian yes. over there? <laughs> <laughs> you know the rules better than anybody, so. <laughs> okay, so I guess we are uh, ready for what, Mr. Lazo? Vote on the main motion. Vote on the main motion. Oh, All right. in favor of the main motion, does anybody roll, need at least? Roll call, please. Roll, roll call, call. okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Duval? Yes. yes. Mr. Lazo? Yes. Ms. Peliquin? Yes. Mr. Thomo? Yes. Mr. Bishop? Sure, yes. Five yes on the main motion. Thank you. Thank you. So at this point, let's go back to 4A, discussion of our January 9, 2017 school committee minutes. Any corrections, additions, deletions? Anybody like to comment on any of them? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to uh, our newly created uh, 4B chairman's uh, announcements. I'm going to uh, refrain from that. I do want to welcome our receiver, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Villar. I'm sure he'll be commenting later. As the public knows, uh, in the sh two short years that Desi has been with us, uh, Mr. Villar will be our fourth receiver. Uh, we wish him better luck than the first three. That's all I can say at this point. Okay, we'll move on to new business, uh, 5A. High School Representative Francis Garcia. Lovely to see you, Ms. Garcia. What's going on? Okay, I'm gonna pull my phone out because I have the notes on my phone. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember when you used to not be able to look at your phone during meetings? Like, people would get mad at you? Like, like we've come so far. <laughs> okay, so um, the Student Council and National Honor Society, we're very happy to assist the Lions Club for the annual, um, cartoon breakfast that's usually on um, Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, April 21st is gonna be another big community service project. It's called Beautify Southbridge, which is um, basically students go out and help pick up the town and I guess make it pretty. <laughs> um, uh, the seniors are having, well, they're hosting a talent show and a lip sync battle um, on April 5th. It's open to anyone in the community also. Um, if you want to send your submissions to klandeen at southbridgepublic.org. And um, it's from 7 to 9 p.m. and it's to help raise um, money for the senior trip, which will be at um, Club Getaway in Connecticut. 
And um, that's pretty much it. Wonderful. Unless you guys have any questions. Wonderful. May I ask how your uh, AP classes are going at this time? Um, well, my problem was fixed, but mm -hmm. it was kind of okay. like a Band-Aid. All like, right, well, I'm sure we're going to move forward <laughs> like, in a positive um, they, fashion. They kind of like fixed one problem, but kind of gave the other problem to the other students, okay. so it's, okay. kind of, it's um, improving. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> We'll get, we're moving. Uh, I would like to, uh, is, there, is there a fee for the lip sync? To oh, yes, um, $5, $5 for the tickets. I will pay $5 so Mr. Lazo can lip sync at the, uh, at the <laughs> I will I'll pay $10 to see Mr. Bishop's, uh, and, and he needs to lip sync twice, though. So. Thank you. It's okay, always nice. a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you for, your, thank you for your, your honesty and openness with us at these meetings. We appreciate it, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the remainder of your school year. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Ah, and now we're going to uh, introduce a uh, new receiver, Dr. Jeffrey Villar. I hope Dr. Villar will share some of his uh, insights with us. That's on all the time. On all the time. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I certainly um, understand and sense there's some tension and concern among members of the school committee about um, my selection and role here in the town. Um, all I can say is I come uh, with good intentions. I come as an educator who's served uh, in central office in, uh, for 14 years in different school districts as a leader, uh, four years of that running a statewide nonprofit uh, working to close the achievement gap. Um, I would like for this school system to have a great sense of success. Um, I would like to walk through the schools and see happy teachers and happy children and happy families. Um, I'm very pleased to say I spent time in all the schools today and I saw a heck of a lot of happy kids, a heck of a lot of teachers that were excited, uh, working hard, administrators greeted me at the door, felt very welcomed, um, and I'm, I'm pleased um, that I'm stepping into that because my goal is to only amplify happiness uh, because I do think that every child in this district deserves a high quality education, every child deserves to feel loved and supported, and it's our job to do that. Um, candidly, I hope we can all work together to accomplish that goal and spend our energy looking forward and not relitigating the past. Um, there's a lot that needs to happen here. There's a lot of great things that can happen here, and I've heard of great things that have happened here. Um, so I hope, um, as you get to know me, you learn that I'm a pretty straight shooter, tell you how I, I see things. I'm passionate about student learning and supporting kids and families. I'm, I think I'm a pretty good listener, so I hope members of the community, members of the school committee, members of the town council um, will engage in conversation with me about how they want this school district to be so that we can work together to accomplish our, our common goals. Um, it, to me, again, it's just so critical every kid can learn to hear if, about the AP situation and, and hearing that one problem solved, yet another is not, that's a, that's a difficulty, that's a problem we need to solve. And that problem is deep. Um, that problem is not due to a lack of effort on the part of high quality teachers working their best, but it's a systemic failure to be sure that we can provide every kid with a great class, a great AP class, a highly engaged lesson. I believe in systemic education, which means that all of us working together can get a better outcome that uh, leaving it up to an individual teacher to solve all the problems of the kids in front of them, uh, those problems are too complicated for one person to do it. So we have to come together and we have to think about how we can support our teachers to do that. Um, I chose to come here uh, because I think that this town um, has a, a lot of great roots. Well, I'm a New Englander myself. Um, this reminds me of many towns I've been in and um, I'm saddened to hear about a lot of the, the difficulties that have been here and the turnover. Um, and on my first day, I learned of turnover. Um, these are problems we have to work together to solve, um, not against each other. Um, and so I come olive leaf, olive branch. I wanna work with folks to improve the school. So hopefully we can all work to do that. Um, there's plenty of to do. And not because of deficit, but because the world has changed. We're in a 21st century schools. 
Um, and I can tell you there's a lot of districts that are moving in different directions that we're not there yet. So as we think about addressing concerns, we should be thinking about what are we doing that prepares our kids for the new world. Um, and I have six children, my oldest is 22, my youngest is six. School has changed and what they need to know has changed just in that time frame. Uh, I can't imagine what the next five years bring. This technology is just flying out there. Um, the types of jobs that kids are gonna need to be prepared for, um, we don't even know what they're gonna be. So critical thinking, the ability to read and write, interact with people and work as a team are certainly gonna be critical skills. So we have a lot to work on. Every district in Massachusetts has a lot to work on to hit those targets. Um, so thank you. I certainly look forward to working with folks. I certainly expect um, a lot of uh, difficult conversations and questions as we grapple with some of our challenges, but um, I am very pleased to be here. So thank you very much. And um, I'll turn the mic back over. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Villar. And we'll move on to item 5C, members form. Is there any member of the committee that would like to speak this evening? We'll start on my far right with Mrs. Pelliquin. It's Ms. Pelliquin. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, okay, I have a few things, and I, I don't want this to be a really long meeting, so I'm hoping I can just go like boom, 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 boom through my things, and then we can just move onwards, because I, I have things to do tonight. So where are we? Last meeting, we talked about writing a letter to the uh, town council about a municipal audit of the school department. Mr. Chairman, were you able to draft a letter, or is that something? Uh, that I, I, I was not, and we'll dis I'll be happy to discuss that letter with you after the meeting. Okay, because if that's something that we need to discuss at like a future meeting date, I would like it to affect the next meeting I believe, date. Uh, I, I don't want to violate the open meeting law as uh, receiver, the prior receiver uh, mentioned to me. I think uh, we maybe should put that as an agenda item on the next agenda. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Jackie Ryan, my best friend and uh, school committee member uh, friend, said that she couldn't be here tonight because she was sick as a dog, but she wanted to ask me to thank Dr. Townsend for his service to the community. She said that he did a really great job with the kids, and she was really impressed by what he accomplished uh, during his time here, and she wanted to pass on his congratulation and wish him all the best in his future endeavors. So I wanted to pass that along for Jackie Ryan. Um, I know this isn't directly related to the school district, but as you guys know, I work at a housing agency and the cause of homelessness is something that's very important and should be important to all of us in the community. There's a lot of need here in Southbridge. Uh, so I would like to tell you all to uh, save the date, if you could, for the annual Walk for the Homeless, which is in Elm Park uh, in Worcester. It's going to be May 20th. It's the third Sunday in May and it's a great, day to go out and walk with your family and celebrate community while raising money to help homeless families here in Worcester County, including people in Southbridge. It uh, benefits programs that service Southbridge as well as the entirety of Worcester County. So I'll bring flyers the next time we have a meeting and I'll pass them out. So not that I need an agenda item, I just want to hand out flyers. Um, to the point of the uh, the woman who came and gave the public input, I know that it was recently in the newspaper that I pulled my children out of the district, but I do want to issue my utmost support for the teachers of the district. I have to tell you, I had the most amazing experiences with some of the most amazing teachers I've ever met while my kids were students, and I support the teachers of these schools 110%. I just wish they had more. I wish they had more support. And... I would go into that more, but I think I would violate the open meeting law again. So maybe, you know, maybe for the next meeting we can submit agenda items. Yes, that's absolutely. I would echo to all members. Anything you'd like to see on the agenda at the next meeting, please? I think that would be good Email because I would, like I, to, I would like to have some time to sit and think about agenda items I would like to add because there are, th there are questions that I would like to absolutely. have raised, like in terms of like service delivery not improving in certain areas since the receivership happens. Um, I have a question for Dr. Villar. Uh, I heard from the uh, chair of the town council that you signed a five-year contract, is that true? Uh, no, I, I have a three-year contract. Um, what I had stated during that meeting is they asked me um, how long before we saw measurable improvements, and I said my experience tells me it's generally about five years before okay. we see that. 
So, but your contract is for three years? Correct. Okay, okay, because I didn't, I didn't want to go around town saying, you know, blah, 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 has a five-year contract without, like, talking to you. So I think that's a good thing to get out for, because, you know, the public wants to know, you know, what kind of a commitment can you make for us? Because, you know, I understand it's a really big commitment, and you're, you're taking a leap of faith, because this is a very hard job. You know, this, I'm not going to lie to you, it's a difficult job. Um, okay, I have other things. But I think I, I think I'm good for now. So, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Wall. Yeah, I want to welcome Dr. Paul. Could you grab your microphone, please, so the yeah, bring it people? To your face. I'm sorry. You're going to talk into it. Uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Valar on board. She just asked one of the questions that I was going to ask. Um, so technically now, does the receivership go back three years for us, and you might be here for five? So quite candidly, um, I have a contract for three years. Uh, the determination of the receivership, we certainly can go back to the uh, Department of Education. Um, I, my understanding is that they will continuously evaluate my performance and the performance of the district. Um, I candidly would like uh, to have a renewal and be here much more than three years. Well, welcome. Hopefully, everything works out good. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Tomo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman Heslin. Um, has a departure date been established yet for Dr. Townsville? Oh, this is, would, this is to would, the uh, receiver. To. Uh, no. So, uh, Mr. Townsville did make me aware of uh, his decision to leave uh, yesterday. Uh, we are now going to be in negotiation with the organization that the superintendent that's hiring him um, to figure out what his last day in the district will be. Um, clearly, I need to do what's uh, best for us as they are now lobbying for their side. And then, of course, the next step will be identify an interim leader for the building and then a process to select a new school leader. Thank you. Mr. Lazo. Yes. Um you have to excuse my cautious optimism. You're number four for me, and um, Mr. Townsville is number three. And as the door turns, the revolving door in Southbridge creates a, uh, an unstable atmosphere when there's so much turnover, which this has been a roller coaster ride since the state got here. One of the things that concerns me, I welcome you, and you will be held on your own merits, not the performance of the previous three people. But the, the budget concerns me greatly. Uh, the numbers that are being put out, even your own salary line, at $198,000. I don't know what salary study Russ Johnson did to uh, take our district and our issues and put it to a dollar number, but that's, to me, a very large number for a small district. Uh, and again, um, the turnover in the front office with the directors, the finance director's office concerns me greatly. Um, but I think I am cautiously optimistic. You seem to have good credentials compared to the previous receiver who had no experience as a superintendent whatsoever, number two. And uh, I hope you bring out the team concept, which I love the team concept. I live my life that way, working together. You can knock down any mountain, you can move any, value, any mountain aside and continue the good work. The problem is some of the people that have come here have zero disciplinary standard in this classroom and in the school. And I do want to point the finger a little more accurately at the secondary education. Our elementary schools have been coming leaps and bounds where I think the discipline really hurts and lacks whether it be the belief that you should pet a kid on the head and not send them to the office, or if a kid strikes an administrator, which usually is a five-day outside suspension by handbook, but they get a one-day inside suspension. This has been the disciplinary standard at the middle high school, where it's like jailing, nailing jello on a tree. It doesn't have a standard where a child understands if you do this wrong, this is the penalty. If you do it a more severe problem, it's a more severe penalty. We've seen in the last three receivers to kind of cook the books on the disciplinary stats that the state beat us over the head with when they came in. 
So I think we're going to take a good look at it. I'm looking forward to coming into your office and deal with these issues on a one-to-one -one basis because what happens is people still contact the school committee. Although we have zero power, we are like potted plants, We've been put on the shelf. What happens is parents come to us in the supermarket, at the hardware store on Main Street, and they want to talk to us about the issues, problems, behavioral patterns, uh, an array of things. I would rather not have to deal with it here. I would rather deal with it in your office, like we used to do when South Bridge ran the district. But when we got pushed aside, it leaves one form for us tonight. So I hope we can curb a lot of the complaints where they can be handled more at the building level, which is not my job. It would be your job to deal with the building managers, the principals, which needs a lot of work. We are going to be losing Mr. Townsell. We were promised this big, the sun's coming out, Mr. Townsell's here. He will be here for a long time. Pioneer family every morning. Well, Pioneer family, daddy's leaving. Now we have to refill the position. And I'm confident with your qualifications are much better than the receiver two who put the person in position in the first place. Mr. Townsell, I wish him the best. He's put his best efforts forward. But again, you must stay in position for a period of time in order to see results. I noticed I looked at the West Street crew there and the elementary crew. They stick. They live here. They're taking ownership to every decision, whether it's a good one or a bad one. I can get behind that 110%. I can't get behind the disciplinary standard that we have at the middle high school. It's time for some drastic changes. We cannot educate if we cannot discipline. That's an old adage that fits. The shoe fits. We're wearing it right now. I have confidence in you. You'll be judged on what you do. I am coming behind you cautiously optimistic that this will be a new dawn. As the Department of Ed told me when I first heard, it'll only take two years. Everything is not broke. And when they got done, they broke so much. It was like a bull in a china closet. You are being handled. You are being handed quite a fee. And I think you're going to need this school committee. Get us on board. Let us know what you need. Let's work together on it. I'm behind you 110%. But the minute we play a foolish game, like when Rush Johnson has a school committee meeting and then announces after the school committee meeting and presents the new receiver or does all the budget decisions, not with us, but after us, that's not good. That's not dealing in good faith. And I think when you deal in good faith, you build the trust build a relationship, and I, for one, will not let you down if I am on your team. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lazo. I think our student rep would like to ask a question. She's nervous. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm a senior, so it doesn't really affect me, the new principal. I mean, like, maybe for three months, but I'm leaving, so it doesn't really matter to me. But um, I'm kind of worried for, like, everybody else because we keep having new principles and I know that that's a problem everybody knows it it's it's a fact but it just really worries me that if we can get a principal that's gonna stay and I, I congratulate Dr. Townsell because you know everybody has their own lives and stuff but I just it's worrying because in school today that's was like the only talk and it, for the seniors, we didn't really care because, I mean, we're leaving, but it's, it's sad for everybody else. It certainly is. Uh, sad for me, too. I, I also understand um, the complexity of having a new leader all the time and how that's not good for uh, the students, it's not good for the teachers, it's not good for this community. I mean, it's something, again, that we all have to work on because part of what we need to do is market our community, right, so that um, when we are doing this search, we can get the best and the brightest, and we can also probe. And candidly, I can tell you my process, a lot of questions were asked about my commitment to be here. Um, so I do think there's recognition of the need for consistency. Um, so we need to find someone who's willing to commit. Um, and then I need to find a way to create a condition where they, they can do that. Uh, because that is in the best interest of all the children in that school, all the really adults at that school, because you guys are, are no longer children, quite candidly. 
Um, so all the adults in that school. Um, so I share your concern, and it's a top priority now that has you know, arrived on day one. Yeah, and um, thank you. I also want to agree with um, um, Mr. Lazo because discipline is a huge problem in both the middle school and the high school, and. Um, I know people don't think about like old ways, but my mom, like Mr. Lazo knows her, and it's just kind of sad because when my brothers used to go to school, it was not like that. And I feel like somebody like needs to be appointed like head of discipline or something, or I don't know what it's called, but it, it's a really important factor because it really does um, affect the classroom a lot. Yeah, and I agree. Order in the classroom is critically important. Holding children accountable for good behavior is critically important. Supporting teachers is critically important. Um, there are ways that we can do that that are good for everybody. Um, one of the dangers when you start collecting information and data on suspensions and discipline and then saying you have to be better at it is you create conditions where, where there's the suspicion, are you cooking the books is what you said. So we need to figure out when we create our own uh, internal accountability systems is how are we creating classrooms that are supportive to teachers and children that want to learn in the classroom, right? They want to produce. Um, I did this when I was a principal and we reduced our referrals by 40% in a very busy uh, 1300 kid middle school in an urban setting. Um, but the critical piece when I did that was to say to teachers, but that doesn't mean I'm going to want you to tolerate physical aggression or some massively inappropriate behavior. We have to deal with that. We have to teach kids to behave and how to behave in school. So we have a balancing act when you talk about improving those metrics. Critical, you'll hear me say over and over again, is supporting teachers. We have to find a way to support teachers because teachers are the ones who teach children. I. I can work with the teachers, but I'm not in their classroom, so I have to set the stage for them to be successful. Um, and that does start by providing excellent school leaders, and so we have that problem to deal with now. Thank you. Uh, just a point of reference, uh, the term uh, cooking the books is not something that anybody on this panel brought forth. Uh, it was brought forth by a faculty member at the middle school, uh, high school, I believe in middle school, uh, not too long ago. So that, that, that certainly uh, is where that term came from. Uh, it's Fair nothing enough. that we invented here on this podium. So, Chairman? Yes, Mr. Lawson. If I may, the reason why I use that is because the, the disciplinarians at the high school, the assistant principals and teachers, are under a tremendous amount of pressure from the previous receiver, Ms. Uzenga, which they wanted the, the disciplinary stats to go down to show progress, and I understand that. But not to the point where you have a chair outside of a classroom, the student goes outside, not sent to the office, sits outside, the AP comes up, talks to the person, reinstalls a disruption back into the classroom, only to disrupt again, but statistically, wasn't sent to the office. Statistically, you're not expelled when you have one day inside. I can, I'm gonna come to your office, with a documented calendar of problems that was given to me by somebody in house uh, that was so frustrated with not handling the problem for the refusal to identify the problem. And if you don't identify the problem, you will not solve the problem. And I think that you might have the experience to deal with this problem. I'm not worried about if the statistic goes up as a school committee member. I'm concerned about the safety of the kids and the progress of the classroom. One person should not disrupt as many classes as they have at Southbridge High School or the middle school or the hallways or the cafeterias. We will work on it, but it is a very serious, serious issue with the parents and the students. You're hearing it from our student rep. We will work on it, but the, the, the thing cooking the books was making it look like things are fine when they're not fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to agenda item number 5D, setting the next meeting date. Do I have any recommendations? Um, I would say two weeks. Uh, actually, we, we meet once a month uh, under the current format. I know. I'd, I'd, like, to, uh, I'd like to recommend uh, uh, March 13th at 7 p.m. If I could, if anybody would like to uh, make that motion. I make a motion March 13th, 7 p.m. here. Second. Council Chamber. 
Second. All in favor? I have a question. Are we still going to be having subcommittee meetings? No, I'll be discussing that with, uh, they're not required, the uh, receivership is not required to have them. Uh, I know. We were supposed to have a budget one this evening, it was canceled. Dr. Vilar has been here about uh, 48 hours, so we certainly want to let them figure out where the business office is okay. before we have I'll, a budget. I'll stop being so okay, so we, <laughs> right. I, we're all impatient, but yeah. in fairness to this gentleman, uh, he needs to figure out, you know, a few things before we... I know. We... Let's let him learn where okay. the bathroom is. All right. I'll, take, I'll accept the motion for adjournment. So move. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Have a good night. All right.